Okay, so I'm assembling the Hakka Castle V1, and I'm going to follow the any cubic instructions because I cannot find any instructions on how to do this. Now, the part bags are labeled like one, two, three, etc. So I think that these sort of align with some of the steps because what I found was that the first step says to like use um, C16 and C11. Well, C16 is M4 by 10. And in this bag, there was uh, M4 by 10. And then these uh, gear pulleys and these go on the bottom uh the bottom portion of the triangle all the motors go on the bottom with the gear pulleys and the idle idler pulleys go on top so i'm assuming that all these parts will be used for step one and then all the parts will be used for step two and so on okay so the first thing you should do is you see all these little shiny metal pieces clean them off you don't want them falling around getting anywhere falling into your hot end or ruining one of your bearings or something glass cleaner uh, nobody wants to watch me clean so the first step according to the directions is sort of make the top uh, the top triangle and the way they want you to do that is you got these pieces and there's a hole in the top or bottom, but there's a hole in one side. So put these screws, M4 by 12 or 10, put them through and put these square nuts on just gently so that you can take an extrusion, slide it on, right, and tighten it down. This nut is incredibly annoying to tighten down inside you can only get like an eighth of a turn so try to spin it with your hand as much as possible um, first and you do this on all three sides all on the same side all with the nut facing up and then when you're done uh, you can sort of connect them all together right so the next step once you get the top all put together is to do the same thing to the bottom. Now the bottom is essentially the same thing except twice as big and there's nothing to tell you which way is up and down. Well, the hole here is smaller so you can't put the rod all the way through. You can't put it all the way through like that. But look at that play. That's not a good sign for precision printing. Yeah, yeah, you tighten them up back here, but Mmm. Mmm. Let's see how that works out. So, not enough screws in bag one to do all the bottom uh, and the top. I could move on to bag two. Here's the other thing is that some of these screws that I got, ones that I there's no there's no there's no hole. Like you put the you put the thing in there, it's like it's filled up. It didn't get punched or it got it got filled up. Whatever. I got two of those bad ones. Okay, I have the bottom sort of done. I'm about one hour into this build, and all I have are the top and bottom, and you're going to say, what the hell's wrong? What, what, what's wrong with you? And first of all, these little square nuts, they're supposed to fit in the T-tracks. You know what? They don't all grab onto the tracks, so you'll be, like, spinning and spinning, and nothing's happening, and you'll have to, like wedge the bar a little bit towards you and loosen this one and do that one and then you find out the screw doesn't have a hole in and you got to take the whole thing apart and then also this the one where's the camera the one 
Oh, it's so annoying. You can only turn it like an eighth of a turn. And then, so what I try to do is get the long end in here and give it a couple. Sp they really need to put a hole like right here or just don't do this. Put this, put this on the outside. I, this is so supremely annoying to put these things together. Uh, make these washers, these square washers a little bit bigger, please. So that they actually catch the sides of the rails. So then here's what they want you to do, as long as this isn't, so these have to be somewhat backed out, but not too far backed out, or you'll never spin them in. Okay, a little bit on each one at a time. Make sure they're all facing up, and you can tell because they all have the little indentations. Oh, oh, oh. Why is this not going? Okay. Kind of go at it. So then you got to push all the screws out. Because they can't be in too tight. And then they have to be out. And then you sort of collapse them all at once. Why is this one? Oh! Aha! Done. Now you just have to spend 20 minutes, like, A, remembering which side is loose, because you forget it, so just take it and rotate it, and it's always, like, the inner side. Just making sure it's dang tight. And then you got this great, like, okay, it's time to tighten the screw, but it doesn't actually catch, so you got to, like, shake it around, or you put something in the, in the track here to sort of catch it, and if this inner one doesn't catch, well, you're out of luck, because... Oh, man. I would build one of these and then say, okay, I need a version 2. So I found the best way to get these nuts to go in is to sort of stand it up like this and then take your thumb and just sort of uh, just sort of wail on the screw a little bit in, in the direction. Just try to, like, fling it. And that'll sort of rattle the nut around and get it to collide in here. And eventually uh, you can spin most of the, uh, the slack out of it. And then when you're done, give it a couple spins like this on an angle. You can get your thing in there kind of on an angle. And then go in there for the high torque last couple turns, right? So stand it up, bang it, fling it. You know, give it a couple taps, then move on to the next side, and that should get you going. So now we have the top and bottom done, and this is the bottom, bottom. Ooh, ooh, I got one side I didn't do yet. Okay, hold on. Yeah, just like that, and that takes up all the slack in there. Sort of, uh, I'm going to do the other side, because there's four of these on each thing. There's eight on each corner. Ooh, that's just a lot of square nuts. Okay. Done. Top, the bottom has the solid footing. And the top has the little indentations. And now we're ready to put the taller pieces in? No, not at all. I don't know what I'm saying because I haven't built one. I need to go back to the any cubic directions. Put something in here. Put some uh, idler pulleys in here at the top with some kinds of screws and then motor mounts in here. And then we'll be ready to do sandwich them on top. Mm, sandwich. I know that's not funny, but I'm actually kind of hungry. Okay, uh, we're on to uh, two uh, problems. So I looked in the AnyCube steps, and they're like, hey, put a M320 with a hex nut in this hex-shaped hole, and you're like, that's not going to hold anything. Like, so it might dig in, it might dig into the extrusion, but like, I, I don't get it. 
If I put it in the other way, it doesn't say to. Like it, like it clearly just shows the head. Well, maybe you add another nut later. I don't know. Uh, so in this kit, I don't actually have idler pulleys, so this is the second problem. And I think these two flange bearings together should make the idler pulley. Now, okay, truth time. Uh, it occurred to me, so I've been dogging this thing for not having instructions for the uh, last hour or so. And it occurred to me just to go, like, double check. Because you search for the brand name, Haka, and you don't find anything. And then I thought, well, let me go to the eBay sellers page. And sure enough, link to PDF instructions. All with exactly what I was saying, that the top part gets built first and uh the bags are even numbered hey here's part one bag part two bag so uh wow um i mean i'm not gonna say i'm an idiot because i think everyone knows, oh i am an idiot but uh at least i didn't get too far along before i thought let me let me double check and now now that i found it i think i remember seeing it earlier in the week when I ordered it and I was like, okay, good. There's build instructions, but and then you get lost looking at all these other comparisons and review sites and you forget, and then you Google it and you can't find it and you go off on tangents. So, uh, when you put the motors in, these stupid holes aren't reamed out all the way and you got to kind of force your motor up in there and then you got to put three m3 uh nuts on there and there's no way to tighten them with your fingers and they don't give you a tool i have an open-ended m6 wrench which kind of works a five might work as well but the closed end does not work so i'm really surprised they don't give you just a crappy uh, open-ended wrench to tighten these down because this is a chore. I don't know why. Anyways, it's a pain. Okay. Uh, one gripe is that uh, it's got mechanical end stops and the wires come through the center of the extrusions and then out here. And while I don't have a problem with that, uh, one of the end stops came with this white thing, the harness, like connected to the wire. So as I was doing up the end stop connectors, I thought, better put the harness on. I didn't know that it had to go through here, so I got to take them all out. They're pretty damaged. I don't think they'll stay in. I'll probably have to epoxy them. But uh, that, and then, so the instructions tell you to, like, measure the end stops and put them 54 millimeters from the top and get them all perfect. And then the next thing it does is say to like put in these linear rails. This is not a good shot. Put in the linear rails and, uh, and it shows you like taking out the end stops to, to put them in. And then it says like, you know, make sure that the, the top touches the end stop. But then it's like, it doesn't tell you, like, oh, by the way, as soon as you stand it up, they're going to fall right off, and there's nothing you can do, so just keep it laying down. Uh, yeah, let me... Alrighty. Okay. I don't think I'll ever get these out now. That's the problem. Okay, because... So... Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, I'm never getting that out. God damn it. One of them fell off, but it has these, like, T-nuts, like real T-nuts that I assume when you align it will, where are you? When you align it, it'll go in the channel, and then as soon as you start turning it, it'll it'll twist because they, they, they are tapered somewhat, and the bottom has, uh, the underside here is, like, textured and grippy, so I'm pretty sure they're designed to be, like, just done up but the manual shows you like taking the end stop off and sliding them in right after the step where it says like be precise and lock them in at 54 millimeters from the top and make sure they're all 54 millimeters and i did that anyways gripe gripe over 
Uh, okay. So. Hot end. For some reason it has an end stop. The hot end has an end stop. And a thermistor wire. And a power wire. And then it's got this molded plastic bit. And then it's got this thing, which is damaged that I need to clean up. It's like I got a used kit or something. Okay, so then they say, let the wire out through the housing. Like, so like this is supposed to like sit on your J head. And then they're like, let the wire through the hole like, like here's the hole it can't it can't even fit like one of these powered wires one and that's it two no way it's i'm gonna have to drill this out i don't know if i should but I don't see any way of this getting getting together unless I just don't let the wires out. Unless I just bring them through the bottom, but I don't know. And then I'm going to have fan wires. Like, I don't know, man. This is iffy. Uh, so I don't think I needed to drill this out, even though I did. Apparently, after looking at the documentation, the wires come out here, in the back. This is a hinge uh, mechanism so that if the print head hits anything, it's going to lever this up and let go of this switch. And so the letting go will be the indication that you've hit your end stop and it'll stop. Maybe for auto bed leveling. Okay, so I drilled out this hole and I wasn't supposed to. It's supposed to be like a spring to keep pushing this lever down. That way, if the hot end bumps into something, stop goes up. I mean, it's supposed to be a M317. I couldn't find any ideas in M320 for my Mendel M320, but this is an M4 washer. It kind of acts like a fender washer, and it covers up that hole that I drilled too much out of. But there's more meat down down back in here that you can drill the second screw into.